topic we're going to be doing. Uh, we're going to be talking about you people. It's a huge movie right now going on on Twitter. It's a you know a lot of social aspects going on in it. Um, I I got a little bit of a um, yeah tw- uh, Netflix. I got a little bit of a play by play. It wasn't There's a whole lot. It. Yeah, I I do want to go and actually watch the movie because I've been told it's actually a good movie and it addresses movie. social aspects we have in society today. Uh, so, you know, t- t- tell the people about the movie, man. Tell the people. What I did like that I didn't get to watch and I was a little upset is I didn't, uh, I really liked, um, what's his name? Jonah Hill seemed like yeah. he's the first movie I've ever seen him in where he was more of a serious role than other movies I've seen him in. Well, I love Jonah Hill's acting chops. And um, my wife let me know that was Nipsey Hussle's uh, wife that was playing uh, Amira, uh, his love interest in the film. And his his name is Ezra in the film. This is the first time that, uh, you know, Eddie Murphy, he's, he's been back. But he's, the last film he did was Dolomite, I believe. And, so just um, out of curiosity was... You know how they like to throw in these big names, but they don't really use them a lot. They don't get a lot of screen time. Was he in this movie a lot? Eddie Murphy was all over this movie in in a fashion that a lot of people aren't going to probably be comfortable with. And I don't think this film is made for you to be comfortable. All right. So this film is attacking your uncomfortability when it comes to uh, stuff that we try to uh, close our eyes to. But let me take a step back real quick and explain there's uh what i did like about the film is the coming together of families and the union of families what we don't do and what we've grown away from as a society i guess in my immediate circumference is the meeting of the families before you get married uh the asking for the 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 daughter's hand in marriage the respect that uh 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 prospect uh son-in-law is supposed to have for the family and the meeting of the minds that is supposed to happen between two families. I don't see that a lot happen. And and I'm glad that this happened in this film. This film is really crafted around uh, two individuals that find love with each other, even though one is Jewish and one is uh, Muslim black and, and they find uh, a, a bond and they try to cultivate that bond. But we see that the family ties start to yank that apart because there's so much untalked about uh, things that people want to have conversations with, but they don't know how to have these conversations. And you see the awkwardness within both uh, families trying to get to know uh, the other child, like uh, uh, Ezra's family trying to get to know Mira and uh, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, Ezra's family trying to get to know Mira. And uh, Amira's family trying to get to know Ezra. Eddie Murphy took the stance of a strong, militant black man. He comes across angry, comes across belligerent, he comes across disrespectful, dismissive. Um, and now, it, uh, just out of curiosity, is it out of spite because he doesn't like the scenarios that he's in, or is it out of his experience that he doesn't like what's going on? Everything, okay. He comes across. He comes across very, very belligerent. Very, he feels if he uh, puts up this, this, this front because he wants to protect his daughter, regardless of what. Both of them, right? The 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 mother wants or Ezra's mother wants and father wants what's the best for Ezra, and Amir's mother and father wants what's best for her, right? But they both feel, both families feel in their heart of hearts. That's not going to happen like that because, you know, the races are supposed to stick together. We don't come from that, right? We grew up a little bit different. We grew up now in a melting pot. Things are different, but they're older. So you see these uncomfortable conversations that they get to have when they meet them. And it's 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 very uncomfortable. You you know what's crazy, though? Just sorry to interrupt you, King. Like, yeah. you look, look at Jonah Hill in this picture that I have on the screen. Mm-hmm. He he is grown like <laughs> like <laughs> you don't see him looking like this serious ever like no, i remember him very serious i remember film. him back in like accepted 
You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was hit and accepted. But it, it's just like uh, he, he's been in so many. He's more of a comedy movie. And I think they do. Oh, this is comedy. Yeah, they, they, that's what I say. I think that they try to, like, intertwine the serious tome of comedy to try to, like, it seems like to me it's like one of those things where it's like this is a lot of uncomfortable conversations, uncomfortable scenarios. But we're going to make you laugh between those. Like, yeah. <laughs> and they do it. They do it well. But they also do it as in teaching. And and you get you get a chance to see families reaching across, trying in some form or fashion. But then there's a message. And, and and the message is get to know the individuals, right? Get to know the people. Don't 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 use them as objects or don't view them as what the past did, because it was a lot of past being brought up like slavery, um, the Holocaust. And it's hurt on both sides. And if they actually took the time out to listen to one another, they would have heard the hurt inside each other's voices. But they were so busy trying to protect both sides, like uh, the both children. It, and they're grown. <laughs> but I did like that. Like when my wife pointed out, um, they the families did come together, though, to go to the wedding uh whatchamacallit, like the pre-wedding party, they did get a chance to sit down. They did do those things. And that was something good to see because everybody wants to know that they have the back end of the family. Be they right or be they wrong to have those people fortified in, in accepting your choices and trying to see your side of it. So I thought the film did a good uh, representation on trying to bridge a gap, especially there's a large gap between the Jewish community and the black community. Oh, and it was really Muslims, um, but it's, you know, black community. And I think this will start to show a little bit more. I think this movie would do a lot, a lot more good than it would do harm for bringing to light a lot of the stuff that they were talking about. And it was good to see. It was really good to see. I'm not going to give you any spoilers because this thing is new on Netflix and it just came out. So I would encourage anybody that is uh, curious about the movie, like comedy or, or in a, a interracial relationship and is having these struggles with their family members, you know, to sit down and see how they deal with it in this film to see if you can use those same tools in your life to try to bring those tools out uh, to fix any little things that's going on because it's very important. I'm dealing with an interracial relationship now, basically, and it's um, Dominican and black. So it's, it's a language barrier. There's a cultural barrier and it's, it's just learning to bridge that gap in between. And I just found it very yeah. refreshing that they didn't run from any of the hard questions. It, w w what I find like interesting is like, if you really sit back and you think about it, like the way the world was originally orchestrated with everyone having different languages, like we were really never supposed to intertwine like we are. Like, but throughout <laughs> years, we've learned how to break those barriers, figure out each other's languages, and and we're here where we are now. It, it, and yeah. it's just you know we, we got a long way to go. I I, I do even though that we've talked to, I, I think I am going to go back and watch this. Cause I, I saw, I saw, I watched like five minutes of it right before I'll I went to uh, this morning. Uh, and when I talked to you, he's like, watch violent night. I, I should have watched this. I, I should have no, watched well, this. See, see the thing was this, you know, you watch this with your girl, you know, watch this. this Cause this is a good film. There's no problems. You know, there's a lot of cursing, mostly from Eddie, <laughs> which, <laughs> which you're going to be like, wow, really? But he plays his role so well. Um, and it's so good seeing successful families, right? I mean, uh, what? That's, that's what you want to see, successful families. This reminds me of a movie I've seen about, like, the interracial thing, like, being that, that shock factor, because that's what it seemed yeah. like this movie's about. What was it? It had... I think Ashton Kutcher in it or something, and he was dating a, a a black woman. And when she brought him back home, the family was not feeling it. Like I, yeah. I, I can't remember what movie that was, but it, it's I, I like the concept of it. I just need to actually sit down and watch it. Um, you know, I'm showing the the actors on here now. Uh, the the chick to the far right, that's the chick that used He's to be in. Guess uh, who? 
Yeah, you talk about guess, guess who? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, check this out, right? My wife thought that uh, Neil Long was in Destiny's Child. And she was like, I'm telling you, that's the girl from Destiny. Child. <laughs> and I had to show, no, boo boo. <laughs> She's not. <laughs> but definitely, yeah, and I'm glad you're watching. And I definitely exposed you. Funeral's <laughs> another one. I like Funeral. That's the one with. Funeral is dope, too. Uh, that's the one with. Uh, now, I don't know if Chris Rock's in it. You're uh, about they, they is Ice the, Cube uh, in that one? They gave the white kid, uh, I think, some some pills, and he was sitting on the roof. He gave him some ecstasy or something like that. He that was, was on Netflix not long ago. That was on Netflix not long ago. Uh, it, it's it's it, it, there's a lot of good movies out there, you guys. Like you know, what's funny is my my dad was raised as a racist, and you know, uh, rest <laughs> in peace. But uh, you know, we we got into an argument once because we was watching Barbershop, and. Mm-hmm. I was telling him, I'm like, because me and him always went back and forth. Like, my dad was like one of those radical people. You know, he, right. uh, I won't go into some of his comments, but, you know, he, he would always argue with me about, like, schematic stuff like that. And, and I was like, it's, it's just like this. We're watching the barbershop. I was like, Dad, this would not be the same with white people. Like, it just wouldn't. Like, there's a such right. thing as black humor, and that's what this movie does well because that's why it's so successful. And he's like, no, they could have easily put white people in here. I'm like, name some actors that could have did just as well. Well, crickets. He couldn't. I couldn't understand do it. what he's saying. If they would have did barbershop for white people, but see, but I, I feel why, like the two, like the two environments are so different. It would be a different movie. Different. Yeah, see, that's th- what that's I'm saying. What it is, right, because the black barbershop and there's a barbershop scene in this film. Funny that you said that. The barbershop, the black barbershop, is where people go to snap. Uh, you know, it's, everything happens in a black barbershop. Everything. I, when I go to my barbershop, I mean, there's a, well, there's a hairdresser in the back, but these guys are selling TVs in the back. I see TCLs leaving all the time. Um, my barber is a, a notary, so people come in and he's like, oh, "Hold on one second. <laughs> and he's actually notarizing stuff as it's going. And we're talking about the football game. We're talking about the baseball game. They got lines on the wall talking about uh, like. Uh, Who's gonna get what on? They, you know, betting on the game. It's so much going on in a black barber shop, and that's all you hear. I've never heard of anything going on in a white barber shop. There, there's nothing. It's it, it, they they talking about sports, so that's about it. Like, <laughs> yeah. So, and, and so, what's funny yeah, is is right. like, I it's it's awfully ironic. Like all the, there is a a rush. There there is a barber shop in Virginia that has a, a white owner. But the majority right. of the barbershops here, they're all black owned, like almost all of them. Like, it, I, <laughs> I, I was talking to Cog once because he's like, yo, he's like, you going to eat three? He's like, he's like, I'm, I'm, you going to need to, you, you going to need to, to, to upkeep that face of yours. You can't go out there looking <laughs> like that. And I was like, all right, man. I was like, he's like, you know, don't worry about the dough. If you don't got it, I got you. And I'm like, yeah, he's like, but I got a condition. I'm like, what, Cog? You go got to do it by a black dude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna tell you this. <clears throat> I go to my black barber, but when I'm going out with my wife and we're going to somewhere special, I'm going mm-hmm. to a Dominican. A Dominican? I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I gotta respect they they haircut game, son. That line, the line that they put, I don't know how they do it. I don't care. And it's it's the majority of the Dominican barbers that I went to. They shape up game is so lit, it's crazy. So, I don't know. I'm gonna have to probably take you to the Bronx and take you to a Dominican barber <laughs> when you hear. <laughs> you, you know what's funny? The, the white people special. talk about like the Bronx and you know Queens and stuff. Man, I'm sorry. I want to stay out of those. You know, I come up there and you guys, let's go to Manhattan. Sure, but then like, I hear like certain things and I'm like, nah. I think I think at I'm it. fine in well, New Jersey. It, I told you. <laughs> Next time you come, you staying with me because you know that's what has to happen. You know, <laughs> but. Yeah, 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 man. Yeah, you see? Yeah, so- see, look, 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 Killian <laughs> Brown. He said, "Yes, me too." Lineup is different. <laughs> I'm telling you, it, I mean, it is. It's not racist. It's, it's just 100 percent the truth. If you want to look sharp that night, you best to go to a Dominican barber, man. Don't play around. With I that mean, face. it's just like one of those things where it's like you know, I, I, uh, you know, especially people of color, like their hair tone is different. Yeah. So a lot of them 
yo, I'm getting in a barber because I want our people to look nice. And, and white people don't have that. Like, most white people lose their hair. Like, let's be realistic. Like, you're talking to a bald headed dude and you got hair. Shut up. No, no, not really. Like, but, but we're talking about one white and one black dude. You go to Walmart, count white people, there's going to be way more white people ballers than black people. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, I don't know. I guess we're not eating the same things. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it's technically you 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 eat a lot healthier than I do. You only eat fish and stuff, man. Yeah, but anyway, shout out to your glorious bed. So um, I think we're going to get to the happened. DC stuff, man. Something Is that where we're going today? 